fam, welcome back to Best Laid Plans. And today's video is going to be all about my 2022 Happy Planner Guided Journal setup. Um, if you've not seen my original um, Guided Journal uh, binder setup, I'll leave a card um, so you can watch that. I did not change too much, but I have some other things I've added. Um, or I have sort of just consolidated. Um, so I wanted to kind of just show you what I'm doing for this year and maybe give you some tips for ways to use your happy planner for journaling um, in different ways, different types of journaling. So I wanted to start by showing you what I did uh, already, which was I took all of my um, finished ones from last year and they're in here. Um, and I actually didn't end up journaling each day. I did a lot of back journaling because I really wanted to journal each day, but I realized that sometimes I need to let it sit a few days. So I have writing in, and then I have like my bucket list and everything that are done in here. Um, one thing uh, I will tell you is that I don't decorate my guided journals hardly ever. Um, if I do like a, a bucket list or like a special spread, obviously I will, but for the most part, I just keep my guided journal near my bedside table and I, when I feel called to, will go in and will write in it. Um, so keeping my habits in mind is how I have differentiated my setup this year. I'm not trying to um, completely fill out a, t a whole journal. Um, and I'm also using more differential ones. So I only had the two Disney Princess journals um, that I combined different months from the undated ones in this past year. Um, so this is, I just kept them in this one. Um, so this is totally full, but this is all of my guided journals from then. So I, I, I didn't even think I was writing that much, but just day by day, that is actually how much I ended up completing. Um, so I'm, I'm very proud of myself for sticking to it, but, um, I do think that the guided format helped a lot with that. So this is everything from the past year. And then I wanted to talk about how I've set it up for this year. I'm still using my binder. This is really good. Um, I like to keep this by my bed and it needs to be inside something because I have small doggies. <laughs> um, and they are, uh, sometimes curious and I certainly don't want them uh, chewing up or getting into any of my planner stuff. So um, I have this in a safe place, um, but I do want to keep it kind of more portable and sturdy. Um, so I like to keep it in its deluxe binder. Um, same decoration, everything. This is the same. Um, some of the pearls and different things that I put on um, fell off or got a little damaged, so I just turned them around, but um, I, I made these little bows, and I really love them, and I have my Disney Princess, especially Sleeping Beauty, my favorite. So this is my uh, what my setup looks like for this year. Um, I decided to take a journal card that incorporated my word for the year, which is brave. Um, so this is it. I'll just kind of, this is from Simply Gilded. Um, I love the Luna Moth. I have it like all over my, my bedroom. It's on my bedding. Um, so I just did this little printout with my Polaroid Mint. Um, and then I cut out the quote, your wings already exist. You've just got to muster the bravery to fly. Um, so it makes me feel very personal. Um, I like having photos at the front of my journal. So I have all of my babies. As you can see here, uh, this is the one we got to keep out of the planner stuff. <laughs> um, but that's uh, Sherman, Figaro, and Pebbles. And Pebbles is the newest addition to our family. And we love her very much. So I have all of my, my babies here, my loved ones. Um, and I like to just keep that at the front of my journal because it is something that I see every time I go to access it. Um, and this is a great way to also like use journaling cards. If you don't want to write on them, um, you can use them for 
um, like vision boards or spreads um, with decoration or you can do what I do and put photos on them and just use it as a way to include like photos or images in your journaling um, so that they're not directly on the page especially if you need that room to write because I do write a lot in my journal so that is the first part of my new setup um, and then I did switch to metal rings these are the rose gold metal rings um, and I I just firmly prefer the um, the metal rings I, I think that a, the plastic rings have differing quality <laughs> um, depending on which ones that you get um, I can tell you that um, in my most recent haul um, I got from Joann's um, on clearance the journal that everyone had been going like wild for the the yellow um, hello happy journal um, it's got like doodling prompts and stuff and it's really cool I'm gonna be using it next year um, but it totally arrived with all of its disc shattered and it was just a mess um, so I mean the inside was fine but if I had been going to use those discs like I would have been out of luck um, my uh, opinion is just to try to use the um, larger um, metal disc something that's going to be sturdier um, or if not those then um, plastic discs that are just that are thicker um, and I, I tend to find that like the solid gold or solid black tend to be thicker than lighter colored disc and clear disc I don't know why that is but like see this is really like flimsy to me but here like the rose gold ones for some reason they just I feel like they're sturdier so maybe I'm just dreaming but that's that's what I have found but I'm a big fan of keeping them on metal discs especially because I do use this journal practically every day and I really don't want it to get messed up so here are um, here are all my journal prompts and pages for this year and what I have done that's different from my setup last time is I actually have gone ahead and I put the entire year in. I um, wanted to do this so that I wouldn't have to fuss with it or move things around later on. Um, I found that when I was switching things out when I was Franken planning uh, when I initially tried that it worked fine then but now I prefer to just have it done. Um, it feels more finished, it, I, less anxiety for me I guess. So I have all the way through December, I've already had all the labels put in, and then for every couple of months, what I do is take a cover, so this is the one I'm about to be in, this is from the Press Florals journal, and then I have the cover from that journal, and then I have this one for the end of the month um, so that way I still get to enjoy the beautiful covers um, and I also feel that it kind of separates each season um, so it's like setting little small goals and having them be divided by covers so that's that's how I have it set up right now and then the journals that I'm using this year are going to be some more of the other princess ones I have left from last year from these two. And then from the new princess ones from the Stronger at Heart, I have um, this one was the one that has Mulan and Moana and Pocahontas. Um, I also am using um, the one that has the Once Upon a Time cover. Um, and this one is Cinderella. Tiana and Belle. And these have really similar prompts, so, um, but I do try to switch it up because I find that if I keep doing the same one over and over and over, I get really bored. I like to change up my prompts, um, which is why I kind of like to piece together um, my journal pages for the year from different guided journals. One thing that I did this year um, is I also incorporated two additional journals. I incorporated the Squad Goals journal, um, and that's where my cover comes from. Uh, I think that this is just a really interesting format, and it's it's nice to switch it up. So that looks like that.
And then the pressed florals, um, which is really lovely uh, as well. So those are the different ones I used. One thing that I did differently this um, this year that may be helpful to some of you um, is I chose not to use both of the weekly and uh, daily sheets from the guided journals. So I'm just gonna flip to ones that I haven't written in because that's per of it. Um, so here's April. So you'll see I chose for this year only to do dailies and I took out all the weekly ones because I find that um, I don't like doing week like beginning of the week journaling. I'm just more of a daily journal person. And then if I have anything like super important or a larger thing to write, I'll use like this blank space here. So all of my journaling pages for this year are daily sheets. Um, and you can also use, uh, if you don't have like guided, don't wanna get like guided journals, but you have the daily sheets, um, or, uh, in, or like a filler paper, you could totally use that instead um, and just do your own prompts or use prompts you found online. Um, I know they share them in different journaling hubs. Um, so like Pinterest and Facebook, Instagram, um, you can search for journaling prompts. But I really like the guided journals. Um, they, they tend to ask me questions I just wouldn't ask myself like, how did I strengthen my mind? Or where did I see love in the world today? Like, I just like, to think about positive things, um, it, it helps me to just manage my anxiety and, and work through things when I need to work through them. So that is how I've set this up. And um, that's really my guided journal setup. Again, I don't do anything really but write in these. Um, so there's not a lot of extra decoration. I decorate like the binder and everything else and I have the covers, but really it's just for me to write in and I keep it in a place where I can access it quickly. So that is that. I did want to talk about a different kind of journaling. Um, and this is something that I use um, this uh, planner for this big planner. Um, this is something you probably saw in my setup from July, um, like a year back or so. Um, but I like to use this t for art journaling. So I ignore like the dates and everything on it. And what I use this for, zoom out so you can see it a little bit better. What I use this for is specifically art journaling. So I may write in this or I may um, have some um, like words or quotes in here, but for the most part, this is just creative mixed media collage art um, and kept in a journal format. Um, sometimes you'll hear this referred to as like junk journaling, um, basically uh, kind of a combination of like art and arts and crafts, scrapbooking, um, but it, it can be really therapeutic, especially if you are someone who works um, like I do in a very um, like left brain analytical type field, but you have like a right brain personality where you want to be creative and artistic. Um, sometimes you have to do things for yourself, I think, even if you don't share them with other people. And I don't always share my um, art journal spreads with others. Sometimes they're really personal. Um, sometimes I'll get really dark and like work out um, anxious feelings um, and, and, and thoughts. Sometimes I will be kind of lost in wonder um, or I will be thinking about traveling to a far off place um, and channeling that. Um, sometimes I'll use it for memory keeping as well. So for instance, when I got pebbles, I had all these little dog quotes that I found and I put together this collage um, with her and I think it's really cute. Um, I usually just ignore the dates or cover them up completely when I'm doing my journal so that like I could use a completely outdated planner for this. Um, so if you have an outdated planner or something and you're not wondering, if you're wondering what to use it for, art journaling might be fun to try if that's um, something you're interested in. Let's see, here was that first week 
with pebbles. So I brought her home. Um, and yeah, just it was really fun to to add those. And then I'll go back. I wanted to show you some of my earlier ones. So this one I have some writing in. Um, so you can see I don't just do decoration. I'll do writing as well. But um, for the most part, I really like doing just collages and just exploring feelings or ideas. So this one was really um, inspired by travel and um, around the world. And I did this at like the very um, like middle of 2020, I believe. Um, and uh, everything was locked down and I, I kind of felt isolated and I think probably we all felt that way. Um, so this was my, um, my spread that I made to kind of satisfy my wanderlust. Um, and so I have like vintage postcards and um, different pictures of maps and travel stamps um, and just just really exploring all those different things. Um, and the fun thing about um, junk journaling or art journaling is you don't have to have like a bunch of fancy stickers or things you've collected. You can literally just doodle. You can cut pictures out of magazines. Um, you have lots of different options. And uh, this is just something that I've started. And I don't do it every week. I only do it from like time to time. But like when I do, I think it's just really fun to explore um, different themes and to really just have fun with it. So this one's more kind of celestial, uh, still kind of embracing that like traveling and wanderlust theme. I use the Stargazer sticker book for this. And if you want to see, um, if you go to my Instagram, which is Valkyrie Plans, uh, I did a reel a while back where I actually go through and show you how I made uh, this spread like I have the whole thing um, so if you can kind of watch me doing the layering if that's something you're interested in but um, I have been using this for art journaling and really enjoying exploring my creative side um, and you know if you're like me and you love um, just decorating and scrapbooking don't feel like you have to use your planners just for like writing plans you can use them for like junk journaling like this you can use them as an actual journal there's so many different ways to use planners um, than just um, a basic agenda but these are sort of my go-to journals that I use and I am really happy the system has been working for me. Um, let me know in the comments if you use guided journals or if you're thinking about using guided journals or maybe junk journaling um, or art journaling using a happy planner. Um, I'm really, really interested to know. I like to just kind of take things and then if they work, keep using them. Um, there's no fail with planning um, or journaling. You just sort of figure out what works for you and you keep going. Uh, but I will um, keep using this and if I do update my journals um, or add anything or take anything away um, in the coming year I'll let you know but this is working for me now and I'm pretty excited about it I will see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to y'all in the next one bye